Uh, so, uh, so what are you guys, uh, you know, doing this, uh, the rest of this day, you got any more, uh, wonderful interviews lined up? Anyway, I'm sure we have, Thanks. uh, I, we just I, have I, meetings, all yeah. meetings, all we're time. Ma- we're making TV show all day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wonderful interviews. We haven't started, so <laughs> it's still out there if this is going to be good or not. So <laughs> will you enjoy it? Um, but on that wonderful bombshell, uh, what's up, fandom? My name is Josh, and today we have two very special guests. Um, we have Mark Banker. Hello. And we have Todd Grimes. How's it going? Uh, not bad. So uh, thank you both uh, so much for coming on. Uh, and you guys are the executive producers and showrunners for The Crude's Family Tree, and we're here to talk about season two. Excellent. You're excited. Okay. We're very excited. That. Well done, right? After yeah. all that rehearsal, it's in harmony. paid off. <laughs> that's, the, that's the best thing. It's like, you, know, you rehearse, you rehearse all the stuff, and then you know, when you... Yeah. Let's, that, let's, it's, like, it's beautiful. Let's, let's make sure we say excellent at the same time. <laughs> um, so, uh, just for uh, some of our listeners uh, who may not be aware of some of your work, um, would you guys mind telling us a little bit about yourselves? I'm going to let you guys fight to see who goes first. I'm going to let Todd, you go first. All right, well, that was easy. <laughs> uh, well, I I, uh, I obviously work at DreamWorks and currently producing the Crude's Family Tree. Um, and it was, uh, this is the second show I've done at DreamWorks. Uh, Mark and I both uh, prior to this show worked on a show called The Epic Tales of Captain Underpants um, together. Um, and we worked really well together, had a great time making that show um uh, so when it came time for sort of developing a new crude show um and the the folks at dreamworks approached us about working together on it we of course jumped right on it because the style of the show i think is both is right up both of our alleys um so so yeah so and prior to that uh um i had you know worked around town at several other studios um all the big ones on various different shows um but you know eventually landed at dreamworks about Gosh, six years ago now, and uh, and uh, between Captain Underpants and the Crudes, have been just having a blast. Um, are they? Is the cafeteria still like banger? Because the last time <laughs> I was there, I was like, uh, it was before they stopped letting you know this, like the the guests have lunch. Sure. So I was like right in there. So I was like, <laughs> it's not, and no, it's the, well because you know every all that kind of sort of slowed uh, and, and changed its formula, so to speak. Um, but we we haven't been there in two years, so we don't really. Uh, <laughs> we've only heard it. stories. We heard it, stories. Yeah, it's such a beautiful campus. I, I definitely yeah. miss it. But yeah. uh, it's still there. I believe it's still the 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 food is still there. Yep. It's it's just been sitting on the line, just waiting for you guys. Yeah, right. it's yeah. a yeah. it's a little cold. Burgers on the grill for two years. Yeah, That's fine. <laughs> That's the someone's feeding the koi fish. That's really the <laughs> that matter. Yeah. So. <laughs> Oh, um, Mark, I got uh, I, I uh, got my start at the Onion uh, when I was in college at the University of Wisconsin Madison, and uh, that uh, helped introduce me to the world of writing for TV and movies. Um, I have worked on probably every genre you can find <laughs> in this stuff. Uh, you know, I worked on uh, sitcoms, uh, Spin City, and Battery Park. And, number of other ones. Um, I've worked in reality TV. I worked on the Osborns. Um, but I've always had a, had a foot in animation because I, I loved animation ever since I was a little kid and watched every show on Saturday morning from beginning with the Ag Report at uh, <laughs> like 6 a.m. through uh, whatever was on, you know, what the, the, the very last cartoon that would play around noon on Saturday morning. By the way, these kids so spoiled. They they oh, they had yeah, to wait one day a week. We got yeah. cartoons. Get whatever you want, happen. whenever you want. Um, but some of the animated shows I worked on. You know, one of the first ones I worked on was Space Goes Coast to Coast, which was uh, a great way to start. Um, I worked on Adventure Time, Clarence, a lot of Scooby Doo. Um, obviously, Captain. You know. Uh, Epic Tales of Captain Underpants, and uh, and now Crudes. I've jumped over a bunch of stuff i've been around a while um but uh this is the best one of them all did you skip reba didn't you weren't you i actually uh (laughs) i actually remember meeting on reba believe it or not that was a shot in the dark on my part so hey when you've been around like you you you, you're uh we've been around as long as i have 
so put a foot so in every door. That, you wrote for that show about a single mom who worked two jobs, but she loved her kids. And I mean, she never stopped. So that's right. That's, no, I didn't, I didn't work on it, but I, I remember I, I remember reading a script and I think meeting, uh, meeting with the wonderful people who did it. Well, nice. Now my Reba joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I stole your thunder. Um, so, uh, so let's, so let's talk about a uh, second season of, uh, the Crudes family tree. So our first season, uh, it, it kind of revolved around like some pretty goofy, um, issues with like the Crudes and the Bettermans, you know, trying to live together, um, after, you know, the events of new age. So what can we expect kind of going into season two? Oh yeah, that's a good question. We, uh, because one of the things that we have, um, with the, with the dynamic of the show is we focus it's this show is very much like a sitcom um, in a way that, you know, it's sort of a family and two families living together and they're very disparate and mine all the sort of comedy from that. But it's also takes place in the crudes world, which is full of um, lush environments and some fun action adventure and prehistoric creatures um, and all this fun stuff. So we're sort of getting to play in, in multiple kind of comedic genres, so to speak. Um, but yeah, at the beginning, we were establishing the new world of the Crudes, which is living with the Bettermans in the treehouse. Um, and then as we get into se- season two, we started to, uh, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting cat, cat bombed <laughs> here. Uh, sorry about that. Forgot to uh, put my dogs this is my that. chunky right here. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we get to go even a little bit beyond exploring just their relationships and their interpersonal relationships with one another and see like sort of new locations and, um, new creatures and, and basically new adventures and also kind of get a chance to like, uh, have some of the characters kind of spend a little time with each other and see how they, they interact together and, that we have not yet seen in the, in the, in the second film, because we only just got introduced to the Bettermans in that one. So now we get to sort of explore a little bit more of that. Yeah. To, to uh, piggyback on that. Uh, I'm, I'm really, these all, I love all these episodes coming out. I'm, I'm very excited. Um, I can touch on a few of them specifically because I promise exclusives. Um, <laughs> There's uh there's one coming out. Uh, we're we're doing our version of like a, a, a inspirational football uh, movie um, in an episode called "There's No Fill in Team," uh, where our character Phil Betterman uh, gets to learn how to play our version of uh, football, which we call Throwgonut. Um, we also have a fun. Uh, Rashomon <laughs> experience at the end of these. Uh, there's a two part uh, story that we tell at the end of these uh, episodes where we find out what happens when the parents uh, go off the farm uh, together for a vacation. And then we come back and find out what happened on the farm when the parents were away and the kids were left in charge. And you can imagine it has. Uh, uh, some similarities to weird science uh, because we grew up in the eighties and we love eighties movies. Um, so what is it like, you know, basically creating canon or uh, a show that uh, you guys didn't originally create. So what's, what's kind of like that experience. So like you're, cause I mean, in uh, new age, there's really no, like you, you get introduced to the Bettermans, but there's really no backstory. It's just kind of like, here they are. And then you guys are creating basically everything for them and expanding on everything with the crudes themselves. So what's kind of like, how, how does that kind of process go of you guys creating like this new mythos around this, uh, this new series? Yeah, I think we, we were fortunate um, at the start of the show when we started developing the show um, that they were still in the, uh, the second film was still in the works. Um, and we didn't, uh, we were both familiar with the film as, as well as the prequel series, Dawn of the Crudes. Um, and then we just got to see early cuts of the second film and, and get to see what they were doing with the introduction of the new family. Um, but Crudes being a franchise, we are sort of like, um, uh, you know, kind of bound to the certain uh, 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 stories that we want to tell and make sure that we're um, staying on brand with with uh, the show and the the franchise as a whole, um, so 
So yeah, we've, we've been really fortunate because we, everybody at DreamWorks is so collaborative that even though we have the feature side, which is continuing to work on new ideas and things for the show that um, we also get to put our own thumbprint on it, so to speak. Um, you know, and we, we have, there are certain parameters that we stick around in or we, that we abide by, but we also get to sort of explore our own takes on what these, who these characters actually are and explore deeper into their lives and their relationships. So that's been really fun. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's a little unfair because we have in a series, we have a lot more time to work with, you know, versus a movie but <clears throat> so the upside of that is we have an opportunity to dive a little deeper into some stories and to focus on uh smaller groupings of characters and tell a tell a longer story with those uh characters um there's another episode we have coming out uh called thunder games where we get to uh learn a bit more about Uga's relationship with her um her mom gran and against the backdrop of the Thunder Sisters and the uh, decision to, you know, them deciding who will be the next Thunder Queen, the leader of the Thunder Sisters, a role that Uga has always thought she would take over when her uh, mom, Grant, stepped down. And obviously, as you can imagine, that transition is less than smooth. Uh, we have another episode called Daddy Daughter Day, where we get to find out uh, about a day that uh, Grug has always spent with Eep since she was a little girl. They go off on their own in the camp and, and they have sort of a, you know, father-daughter bonding experience. Well, we're, our episode is about the first time that Sandy comes along and sort of changes that dynamic in a way that, you know, sort of forces Grug to uh, change his, uh, his perception of what should happen on that trip. Both of those episodes, you know, ended up being... Uh, very touching, uh, very emotional, which, which is a, a, a wonderful sort of aspect of the series that, you know, was maybe even a little surprising to both of us, but uh, there's a lot of heart uh, in this, in this show. Um, so, so kind of like doing like these special episodes and everything like that, is there uh, somebody that you kind of have to submit? Like, do you have to submit your stuff to the, like the little guy in the moon with the, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> Is that a thing? Like, is, is there like a, a lore collector for the crews that you kind of have to run everything by? Uh, they know who we are. They, they're like, <laughs> they got to run stuff by us. Oh, what, no. no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, we all, we, we all collaborate and we have um, uh, uh, people um, at DreamWorks that are executives that uh, sort of, you know, make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so we, I think in the beginning, we were collaborating a lot with all of the folks that had been involved with the franchise before Mark and I started to um, uh, work on this show. Um, but I think it, it does get to a point where it once there's a, a, a level of trust with um, the franchise that uh, that lessens a little bit. Like there, there's not as much, not as many, you know, um, eyes need to be on it. They, they just know that we know what the world is and that and and trust that we're doing it justice that's awesome yeah when we started i think we you know there were a lot of conversations about um the parameters uh the, the of this world you know what is the area that that we can cover in the series and you know once that's established um we sort of stayed in 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 that area and we we have you know the team at dreamworks definitely keeps us uh keeps us on track and and honest, but you know, it's a pretty big, uh, playground. Uh, so we, we never ran out of, uh, ideas and, and stories to tell. That's good. Yeah. Um, what are some of your favorite moments from uh, season two that you're allowed to chat about <laughs> <laughs> without <laughs> giving away any spoilers? Uh, you, you don't want to spoil <laughs> everything, but you know, we want to put on. <laughs> I, I particularly, I mean, aside from, I mean, some of the stuff I really liked how much um, Mark and, uh, and, and, uh, and the writing staff like really like was able to create some stories that, um, and we were doing this right off the bat in the first season too. And it's something I had mentioned a few times when that season came out is that uh, it's so much fun to, to have, to be able to write so many funny jokes and, and dialogue humor, and then also have this, all of these really 
like like special moments between uh, the characters that really actually make you, uh, you know, feel something. You know, it's not just irreverent comedy like a lot of, um, you know, uh, shows of this uh, genre, so to speak, uh, end up being. So we've gotten the opportunity to really like kind of focus more on like um, character development and character stories. And I think that's uh, that's been something that like um, uh, that I've really enjoyed about this show in particular, because most of the shows I've worked on up until this point have been more like that sort of irreverent. Uh, you know, you're going for the joke more than the, the tear. Um, but here on this show, it's like almost every episode you're like, oh, that was kind of sweet, you know, um, and, uh, and fun moments. I think aside from those things, those are all my sort of the things that I love about, uh, the way we've evolved into this season, but we've got some great set pieces in this new season that I really enjoy too. Uh, we've gotten to see some new locales and, um, and, uh, it, we built a roller coaster, spoiler alert, <laughs> um, and some great new um, uh, visuals that uh, that yeah we don't want to give too much away before the before it drops. But uh, there's there's a lot more fun stuff in this season to come. Nice. Yeah, I would um, just looking at this in the, you know these episodes are they're like children. They're all my favorites. <laughs> yeah. um, there's a for the first time in an episode called shock and awe, it's our first episode that is set largely in punch monkey village. Um, and we, you know, get to go to the village and, and, and characters interact with the punch monkeys, um, which was like a sort of new, new territory for us. We actually had to build, uh, that, you know, punch monkey village. Um, some of the other areas we visited, uh, you know, we, we built a, uh, bucolic lake uh camping lake for uh, daddy daughter day um mm -hmm. uh what else here uh, we get to each, revisit the we, thunder sisters the thunder sisters are in this uh you know, for back. the first time we do a thunder sisters episode um i should touch on the idea of, like i you know the look of this show you know is pretty amazing and uh the lighting uh in this show and the directing um are also some of my favorite things uh, uh, about these uh, don't want to don't want to uh, lose sight of those wonderful contributions. All the, the many people working on the show uh, are just working at a uh, above and beyond um, and from home, by the way, yeah. for the last two years, which is yep. another uh, unique challenge for this show. And um, most of the shows being produced are. I, I will say I do like the fact that, you know, your animation style didn't change from like something from the movie you didn't like say some other let's just say some other studio that's down the road where you know we have <laughs> a movie and then we do like the animated version like the series version of that and it's completely sure. different art style and it looks it, it it's weird it doesn't feel like it fits and you're like uh -huh. the way that these people look in the movie and then you just change them and now they look all like this i do like that you know it's the same art style from the movie. So yeah, like we're not like, they're not like pixelated or anything like that. <laughs> little bitty, like weird right. or anything. Yeah. I, I do appreciate that. Um, it, it keeps like a, it, it makes you feel like it's, you know, a continuity instead of like, oh, this is a new thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, well, that's a large, that, you know, that the large amount of that credit goes to our amazing team that we've had, our production team, um, both uh, here at DreamWorks and our overseas partner studios as well. Um, because we, you know, television has, a, you know, a different budget and a different schedule than feature films do. So we, we don't have as much time to spend on things and we don't have as much, um, uh, staff and everything to sort of like, uh, hone all, all that, all the looks and everything like that. So we, we've tried our best to, to make the show feel just like the films, but it, the way we did that is a lot of creative workarounds and, working with a lot of artists and production staff who really know how to do that stuff and, you know, and figure out ways to make things like some stuff is just a big cheat and other stuff is just a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of preparation and thought put into like, how do we accomplish what they did and make it seem seamless for the show, given the, the pool of that we have in terms of the amount of um, out footage we need to create versus the budget that we have, so. Nice. 
Um, yeah, we talk we talk about this a bit, like the the technology, the uh, animation technology seems to change day to day. And you yeah. know, in the time I've been working in animation, what you can do specifically in CG has just advanced by leaps and bounds. Uh, it's it's and. The only, you know, to take advantage of that, uh, you have to have a team of all-stars and the wizards that uh, are on our team that somehow make this all work. It is uh, awe-inspiring. Yeah. yeah, you couldn't do water or hair or anything back in the day or grass. Right. We're like, you know, we're in the future right now. I will. <laughs> the one thing to me that DreamWorks will always do that always stands out is hair. Like, yeah. It's just hair. Like whenever you think hair, it's like, well, DreamWorks does hair very, very well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at the the evolution of hair throughout, like how to train your dragon, for instance. It's like, sure, you know this, and then you know it's like individual strands, and you're like, man, DreamWorks got hair. You should <laughs> hair work. And even like on even on this show, like our hair game is very strong. Yes, uh, it's impressive. Again, yeah. DreamWorks, man, DreamWorks got that hair. <laughs> yeah. If they, it's a hard thing to do in CG, yeah, for sure. If, if they, okay, so DreamWorks, if you're listening, um, I, <laughs> oh, they are. <laughs> I have a gift shop. Uh, you, you guys have the gift shop um, at you know at campus. I should definitely sell like shampoo and conditioner. DreamWorks <laughs> <laughs> brand, and it'd be amazing. Do you yeah, want Hope's that. hair? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, all right. So uh, kind of uh, the last couple questions that I've got for you guys. Um, what do you want um, fans and uh, viewers watching this new season of Crudes? What do you want them to take away from this season? Hmm. <laughs> well, it's, I think it'd be sort of like the continuation of, um, you know, enjoying the stories that we get to tell and hopefully laughing and maybe occasionally crying um, and one of the things that I really love about this show, um, is, uh, is that, you know, audience wise, I feel like it's something that everybody can enjoy, you know, like it's not, we're not just sort of like steering it to one particular audience, even though, you know, from a demographic standpoint, that is sometimes part of what we look at when we're creating it. But generally speaking, I think, um, uh, it, it's, it's a family show and it's like a sitcom. It's like a show that it kind of, it's a show that I remember reminds me of a show that I used to watch, like with my parents when I was a kid, but they were, you know, they were like sitcoms and things like that, but we would all watch them laugh and enjoy them together. Um, I think that's, uh, I think that's one thing that we have definitely been able to, to do because we, you know, we watch the show and we crack ourselves up and we're, you know, not kids. So I think, I think it's a, I think it's a show that can, has a broad audience, I would say. Um, I want people to laugh and cry at the same time. That's, that's <laughs> always my goal. Um, yeah. you know, we definitely want to surprise people. Um, and it's true. Like, you know, after two years where, uh, you know, everyone's sort of stuck in their houses, the families having to find things that they can watch together for, you know, that work for the parents and then kids of different ages. Our goal with this show was to, to create a show that a family can watch together. And it, and it is as entertaining for uh, the parents as it is for the kids. And, you know, that's always a goal. And I think, you know, my family is, is a, uh, I think may represent the four quadrants. And so we try to hit <laughs> all four of those quadrants. Uh, and if it makes, everybody in my family happy that I know we're, we're, you know, we're headed in the right direction, but <laughs> yeah, I think we've made a show that, that, um, that works for kids as well as the adults that may have to watch it with them. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> all right. So what's something that you guys are either watching or reading right now? Oh, yeah. Um, Oh yeah, from the, the, yeah. the fun stuff. I actually, I love this. I love this. Now we're getting into like, <laughs> yeah. um, So what's something that you guys are reading right now? I'll let you go, Mark, first. <laughs> what am I reading? I'm reading right now a book called uh, Anxious People. Is that right? I was just looking for like, I read a lot of uh, sci-fi fiction. Um, and I ran out of uh, the last series I was on, I was like, I want to try something uh, funny and Anxious People is, uh, is a rather funny novel I'm just about to finish. As far as watching, 
stuff. Um, I, I do want to touch on like, I thought um, Ted Lasso was sort of the perfect pandemic <clears throat> series. Uh, it was great. So I, I, I loved it. I loved the second season. You know, I was waiting for season two to come out, came out, uh, loved it. Um, right now, I think we're watching The Dropout. We just finished Pam and Tommy, which was uh, 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 created and written and produced by one of my uh, old Onion co-workers, Rob Siegel. So that's always fun. It's also in a world that I love, the world of air metal. Um, what else? You jump in, Todd. I can't. Uh... Uh, yeah, I mean, well, we've been uh, I watch all sorts of stuff. It's kind of funny. Ironically, I. Uh, I watch a lot of animation, but it's also more like for like work, you know, it's sort of like seeing what other people are doing and seeing, you know, um, how it, you know, how it compares to what we're doing. But a lot of times at night I'm watching things, uh, you know, I like, I, I love, you know, I'm a big geek. I, I'm watching Star Trek Picard right now and <laughs> Star Trek Discovery. Um, of course, Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, which I've watched both of those probably like three times now. Um, we, we've watched this week, we've been watching Spider-Man No Way Home over and over because it just came out on, <laughs> to, to, to buy, you know, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, we've seen the Batman twice. Uh, see, I'm all into that, that, that area, but, uh, but then at the same time, I'll watch the shows like Pam and Tommy. And then, uh, you know, my wife and I watched the girl in the window across the street from the girl in the house or whatever it was. Uh, <laughs> and then cooking cooking shows we watch a lot of uh you know uh, you know the baking shows and things like that because my kids love that stuff and uh and uh so yeah so it's a big it's a wide net at my house for sure <laughs> i can admit that i watched love is blind sure i did and it was <laughs> it was compelling i was an early i was in a on the train early for cobra kai i love cobra kai oh cobra I kai i watched yeah. it when it was on youtube and nobody uh knew it was there and I, I continued on that's such i mean when i heard they were making that show and with the original cast i was so jealous i was like what a genius thing to pull together and it yeah. and it not only met it exceeded my expectations and i'm so happy for billy zobka because man what a what a comeback for that guy so great yeah oh man uh yeah uh that Todd, uh, you're going to have to come on so we can talk some Strange New World. <laughs> come back on, we'll do some Trek. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, so uh, we've got uh, The Crudes, Family Tree, Season 2 premiering. I almost said June. I wrote down June in my notes, and I was like, <laughs> and I was like no. Oh, it's what, a week from right. today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, April 5th um on hulu and peacock you can check it out there um todd and mark thank you both so much for coming on where can people find you social media wise if they want to check out some of your work uh i am i am i'm todd grimes on instagram and twitter like as an i'm i am todd grimes um that's probably my those are probably my two outlets yeah nice. and, oh, and youtube you can find me on youtube if you search my name, I'm probably the first one that comes up. So. <laughs> I don't think you can find me on YouTube. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm at the Mark Banker at on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, I will admit I'm not, I'm not as prolific on Instagram as, as Todd is. <laughs> right on. Sorry, I'm 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 going to see if we can get Mark. Mark, um, is that me? Unless you got fired from football five years ago. I mean, that's oh, no. the thing that popped up. So I, <laughs> oh, on YouTube? That's it. Yeah, no, there's Mark Banker, the coach, who uh, is mo- he, like, if you type in Mark Banker, get the, the football coach. Yeah. yeah. Well, Always competing for views, him and I. Who is the best <laughs> Mark Banker? One, one day. He's winning. You, you, yeah. you'll reach the top. It'll happen. We believe yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So I'll someday, go subscribe. You got to have goals. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Smash we- that subscribe button. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, socials in the show notes. You can check those out. And we're also going to put a link to uh, Hulu and Peacock for uh, the Crude's family tree. So you can check it out there. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh L. Kane. Find the podcast on Instagram at What's Up Fandom. On Twitter at What's Up Fandom PC for podcasts. All of our episodes available. iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Play, Spotify, Audible, uh, check out our video stuff on YouTube. Um, we also have our website, animationstationpodcast.com, because I'm lazy and have not changed the name of it yet. <laughs> um, 
So we kind of, back in the day, we were just the animation station podcast and we kind of <laughs> ourselves into a corner because it was like, we only do animation. <laughs> like, I want to talk about the bat. Wait a sec. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so definitely find us there on, on all the social media platforms. We are there. Um, not on TikTok, not yet. You don't want to see me dance. It's not going to, it's... <laughs> Thanks to one out of 10 for the intro and outro for this episode. You can check them out on Spotify. That's one out of 10 uh, and they are touring. So if you are in the, they're in S- Santa <laughs> something. There's a lot of them. Oh, take two. Monica. Take two. I believe <laughs> they're in Santa Monica. Uh, so if you want to check sure. them out, um, they sure be playing at a uh, awesome place near you. Um, but yeah, thank you both so much for coming on. Um, so, uh, for what's up fandom, I'm Josh. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you, Josh. Great to see you. It usually goes like I'm Todd and I'm Mark, but you know, Oh, let's do that. And I'm, are we still rolling? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, so for what's up fandom, I'm Josh. And I'm Todd Grimes. I'm Mark Baker. And remember dry land does exist. Such a world, yeah.